<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, we're going to be revisiting our good friend here, the original Xbox. Now, the original Xbox is absolutely one of my favorite consoles to mod, and you can also play it as well, too. Not just games, you can also watch like DVD movies and everything on there, but point being, the modding scene on the original Xbox has always been incredibly awesome and innovative from the get-go. When this thing was current generation, I mean some of the physical hardware mods, the soft mods, the custom bios of course with mod chips and even just reflashing the TSOP flash on the system, just so many other things were absolutely incredible and it's still incredible to this day with it getting new updates to software new updates in the form of some crazy custom bios we've seen such as titan which supports drives that could be like up to 16 terabytes and even speeds up the bandwidth on there it's really cool to see some even more common just you know i guess bring up to 2022 standards and quality of life uh, mods would be uh well swapping out the hard drive for a more modern hard drive or SSD, really just doing a SATA modification on there. And uh, this guy here, this is my own personal Xbox that I primarily use. It looks pretty stock and I've always liked the Halo green here, but uh, HDMI in the back. Yeah, it's very nice having that on board thanks to the Xbox HD Plus modification. Now, that is to say, we're not going to be covering that here. I have covered that in a previous review, but instead, we're going to be looking at something that's been pretty commonly looked at in recent years with some of the stuff that I've talked about. First of all, with people doing modifications to the hard drives, not only replacing the hard drives with another hard drive, but just replacing even with a solid state drive, which of course is going to be much smaller. And on top of that, people have even been trying to for a long time now, but successfully, thankfully, getting the console to a much, much quieter state. Yeah, seeing if they can get it whisper quiet. Now, there are many modifications that you can do, and a lot of them are DIY, but there has been a person, or I guess company, who have contacted me before in which I looked at some of these really, I guess, fixes and modifications for the PlayStation 2. Now, I have reviewed products from the Peaceful Outcome before for the PlayStation 2, but this time around they reached out to me again for the original Xbox, and they wanted me to take a look at two products they have. The first one being a hard drive spacer for two and a half inch drives, and the second one, the primary one we're looking at here, being the Quiet Fan Modification, which is a little kit that includes this already pre-done up fan, and a couple other pieces. We'll take a look at this along the way. But I do want to say, not only extend a big thank you to the Peaceful Outcome for sending these for review, but also disclose that, of course, these were sent over for free to the channel for review. Now, this is not a sponsorship. I have not been paid any money or anything else for this. All the opinions that I am going to share here are my own. So with that all said, let's go ahead and get into this here. Now, first, let's go ahead and address the fan mod. The fan mod works on all models of the original Xbox and thankfully is pretty easy to install. Now, it does not have to be a modified Xbox. You can use this on a completely stock Xbox and you might also have a console that has two fans in it. Don't worry if you have this fan mod combined with the other one, it's not going to clash in any sort of way. Just do keep in mind that if you have a Xbox Xbox console like a 1.0 or 1.1 that has an additional fan in there, that system is still going to be louder. Now the console I am using only has one fan in there, so we're just going to be replacing the assembly on that. When you take a look at the fan mod itself, it is pretty nicely pre-assembled and everything. And one thing that the Peaceful Outcome does have is for a few of their pieces for their mod kits, they do typically 3D print them, but I don't really see an issue with this as long as a 3D print is well done. And I will say that these are pretty well done on here. I didn't see any issues with it and nothing that screams, you know, hey, this is horrible. Like, this seems to be built pretty well. Plus, again, this is all pre-done, pre-built, so you don't have to go in there and cut and slice anything on the mod kit itself. 
on the case on the console you don't have to do any of that so you don't need to solder at all if anybody is worried about that you just need to be able to get into your console now the installation for the fan kit itself let's go ahead and do that for the fan kit alone this is going to require three parts it's going to require a t10 bit a t20 bit as well as a flathead screwdriver or a flathead tool of some kind now if you need something more granular the peaceful outcome on their site does offer pdf guides on this but i'll also kind of show you here as well too so what you'll want to do is take the original xbox itself flip it upside down of course remove all cables and everything from it and we're going to be removing the six t20 screws now there's going to be one under each foot like rubber foot on the console and there's going to be two stickers that you'll either have to pull back a bit or just pierce through to get to the last two once you have all six little screws pulled out you can just flip the console right side up and remove the top of the system easy enough okay i don't know how else to say this so i'm going to say this uh when i was working on this i had xbox parts all over the place i had this like sitting upside down on my chair don't do that don't sit on the top of your Xbox case. It hurts. I screamed. This is the stuff I do for you all. Either way, once you get into the console itself, there's going to be three T10 screws that you're going to need to access. Now, I didn't have them on my console, but one of them is going to be underneath the IDE ribbon cable right here between the hard drive and the DVD drive. And then to the left and right of the front of the DVD drive, kind of buried down there, so you're, so you're going to need, you know, a bit of a long bit to get in there. There's going to be two more T10 screws. Just remove those three screws, and at that point, you can start disassembling the rest of the console. Typically, I'll go in and disconnect the IDE cable as well as the power cable from the hard drive itself. Since I already have a SATA modification on here, for me, it's a lot easier because I just need to disconnect the actual adapter. And from there, once you pull the wiring out, you can just take the entire plastic assembly holding the hard drive and remove that. At that point, you then want to disconnect the IDE ribbon cable from the DVD drive and lift up on that as well, too. And from there, you should have pretty clean and clear access to the Xbox's motherboard. Now, you will need to disconnect the fan itself. This is just the little wire and connector running over to the side of the fan. Once you disconnect them from the motherboard, you can then work on pulling the Xbox's fan out from the chassis, which is a little bit difficult to do if you haven't done it before, but it's not impossible. Essentially, what I do is I take a flathead screwdriver or a flathead bit, just a flat metal bit of some kind, and you can come down to the bottom of the fan here on either side. Side, and you want to be careful because you don't want to damage the motherboard but you kind of just gently pull the tab back holding it in and while you're doing that you can also use your other hand to kind of pull a bit upwards on the fan itself the fan should pop up a little bit but you'll also need to kind of pull it away from the chassis itself and once you have that all clear you should be good now once you start installing the new fan before you put it in you're going to want to take one of these 3d printed pieces right here this is kind of the little flat plastic shim i guess you can say one side is going to be flat and the other side is going to have two nubs on it you're going to want to make sure the two nubs are facing downwards on the console itself so the flat side here flat smooth side should be facing you so just go ahead and pop that into the two holes there at the bottom of the chassis. Once that's done, you can take the fan mod kit itself, make sure it is right side up, and make sure you have these two plastic pieces right here facing outwards, like towards the back of the console, and then start popping it into place. It's kind of just going to be about the same thing, just making sure these are going to go out through the back of the console and making sure that the fan mod fits in there nice and snug. If you have to pull back on the tabs a little bit and alternate while popping this back into place, you can do that as well. Now you will have to push in with a little bit of force to make sure that it is nice and snug in the back of the system. And just make sure that everything is nice and flush, like it's not going to be jutting out, sticking out, or crooked or anything. 
And at that point, I mean, most of the modification is done. You can then, just so we don't forget, take the actual connector itself and connect it back into the motherboard for the fan connector. So when we turn on our system, the fan's actually going to work. The final piece of this mod kit is going to be the second 3D printed part, which is just going to go on top of the front of the CPU heatsink like so. And from there, that's all there is to it for the fan mod itself. If you want to finish up at this point, you can just reassemble your console and you're all good to go. Like, that's all there is to the fan. However, if you want to use the hard drive spacer, if you're going to double up, well, I'll show you how to utilize that as well. This here is pretty simple. What you're going to want to do is kind of take a look at how you're seeing it here. And you're going to want to make sure if you're facing it all like this, like holding it like so, that the X is going to be on the bottom and it's going to be on the left hand side. And that is exactly where your drive is going to be fitting. So whether you use a two and a half inch hard drive or solid state drive, it's going to work just fine. You'll then want to take the drive, just make sure it is facing upright like this, and make sure that the SATA connections here are going to be on the left hand side, like they're going to be lined up with this X right here. Now there's going to be nubs inside of the spacer itself, which are going to secure the hard drive or solid state drive. So as opposed to using screws, you just end up popping this into place. And just do exactly that. You're going to want to pop it into place. It really doesn't take all too much effort, and once it fits in there and connects, it's not going to be going anywhere. Now that you have the hard drive in the spacer itself, you can go ahead and pop the spacer into the plastic piece that typically houses the IDE hard drive. This hard drive is held in and secured with four T15 screws, so it's going to be a little bit different. But what you want to do is just remove the plastic piece itself, which should have been removed if you were installing the new fan. And from there, you're just going to want to unscrew all four of these screws. Now, do keep in mind, if you're going to be using this spacer, you won't need these screws because the spacer is not going to use the screws. So typically, I don't recommend getting rid of the screws, but it, more power to you whether you want to save them or get rid of them or reuse them. However, once that's all set up, you're going to want to take the spacer with your new drive and pop it in like so. Make sure it's in this direction and such. You don't want to put it in, you know, backwards or upside down because you want to make sure if you're going to be using a SATA adapter, which you definitely would. I don't know how you wouldn't here, but if you're going to be using a SATA adapter for this drive, you need to make sure that it is set up with the right orientation. Really just take the drive with the spacer, pop it into this bay like so, and once you have it connected there, you should be all good. Just like putting the hard drive into the spacer, when you put the spacer into the plastic piece here for the Xbox, it's going to have some nubs that are going to pop into the holes where you would normally put screws. Now, you'll also see what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just taking this and hitting it, flipping it upside down, shaking it a bit, because I want to make sure that the drive's not going anywhere. If you want to add some extra protection, you can use something such as Captain Tape to make sure you secure it. There's nothing wrong with doing that and it's going to be a bit more safer. Just, you know, if you mess around with your Xbox, if it ends up falling, heaven forbid, whatever it might be. But at this point, you're pretty much done here as well too. So there, we've actually covered both mods. That's how you install the both of them. From here, you just work backwards, put your Xbox back together, put all the screws back in place, and you're done. Now, much like I did with the PS2 fan test, what I did was I set up the Xbox in a empty room with nothing going on, just tried to make it, you know, as quiet as possible, but I also kind of put it into a corner of the room as well, so it would generate a little bit more noise. And then from there, I just used my phone, and I used a app on there called sound meter, which works out well enough for this, just to get a nice baseline for how many decibels the Xbox is going to be giving off in different configurations. Now, I'll go ahead and show you these tests right here, because you might be asking, how quiet is this fan mod? And well, let's take a listen. First of all, just to get a baseline, I went into the room, just set up my phone there, and Xdid did not make any noise after that for a bit. And I got a baseline of 26 decibels. Now, let's also get some information on what our decibel readings would be as well, too. According to the sound meter app, 20 decibels is going to be whisper quiet, so that means that the ambient noise was just above a whisper, which, yeah, that's what I would expect. 
You'll also have 40 decibels for a quiet library, 60 decibels for a conversation. Now, I'm a bit of a loud talker, so as you can see, this is going to like 60, 70, 80, like this is kind of all over the place, but I'm a bit of a loud talker, which would be something like loud music, I guess, at 80 decibels. I don't think we need to go really much further than that, but just keep those in mind that 20 is going to be whisper quiet, 40 is going to be about a quiet library, and 60 is going to be a conversation. Although, again, I'm a loud talker. Now getting into the testing, I will say that my completely stock Xbox is not really completely stock. You see, the original IDE hard drives are pretty noisy, or even if you just replace it with another IDE drive, they're going to be kind of noisy. So if you upgrade to a nice SATA drive, you're already going to get a nice cut on sound. But that is to say, just disclosure here, I am using a stock fan, but I do have it modified with a two terabyte hard drive. So this is what it sound like here compared to really nothing. So just getting a feel on that, you could hear that that is running at about 60 decibels, which is, you know, about a conversation in a quiet room. Now, what I did was I then just replaced the fan itself with the fan mod right here, just to see how many decibels that would knock off. Again, still using that two terabyte drive, but now using a different fan. Now you'll hear that brought it down quite a bit. It brought down to an average of about 41 decibels, which is a pretty big drop because we're going from a conversation to what we would perceive as a quiet library. That's great, and I can barely hear the system. Now there's a way to make it even quieter, and I've shown this a few times here, but I will say, uh, me personally on my own setups, I really don't put SSDs into the original Xbox just because it, you're not you don't have trim on the Xbox itself and plus with how slow the speed is on here since you're dealing with IDE speeds you're really not going to get that much of a increase in performance if any at all <laughs> however there's two reasons why I'm humoring a SSD install one these are getting pretty popular at this point with how affordable SSD storage is getting these days a lot of people are just saying screw it I'm just going to go to an SSD in a original Xbox why the hell not secondly this is going to completely eliminate any drive noise we're going to have from a hard drive. And my goal is, hey, let's get this even quieter in a configuration that's pretty realistic here. So that's what I did. I ended up taking this SSD that I had lying around. I formatted it with Hexen, got it set up and working. And now we're going to see how this sounds with a SSD installed and the quiet fan mod installed. So if you didn't hear that much, I mean, that's good. I was getting an average of about 32 decibels with the fan mod and the SSD installed in there using the spacer. Now granted, the spacer is not going to bring down the noise at all, but it will allow us to install a SSD pretty easily on there. So remember, a ambient room, just how my room with nothing going on there, was 26 decibels, which was just six above whisper quiet. But having the system up and running fully with a SSD installed and this fan mod installed, we were able to get it at 32 decibels. So right almost in the middle of a quiet library and whisper quiet. And I will say, I mean, this is pretty much whisper quiet at this point. We have done a great job silencing the Xbox. Honestly, I don't even have an issue running this fan mod with the hard drive. It, the hard drive that I have is pretty quiet for the most part, and then having the fan mod in there is really making a big difference. But if you want to bring it down even more and make it as quiet as possible, get yourself an 
SSD. So that's been the result of this here. Now, what about my actual thoughts and feelings and even recommendations on these two products? First, let's take a look at the fan mod itself. I will say I thought this was great. I think it's well built. I think it's very easy to use, set up, install. I like that I didn't have to do any other sorts of modifications to the fans themselves, to any of the other parts, didn't have to do anything destructive. So this is completely reversible without ever having to pick up anything such as a drill or a soldering iron for anybody who is wondering. There is one thing I don't like about this fan mod and I will say, I, I don't know what's going on with this wire. I don't know why this is so long. I... <laughs> so you really kind of have to like tuck it, hide it a little bit. Granted, it's not like it's anything that's destructive or going to completely destroy this mod or your Xbox, unless you're really going out of your way to do something nefarious. Uh, but I don't know why this wire is so long. So that's really the only thing I would change with this mod here. The 3D printed pieces are fine, everything on the mod itself is okay, but with this wire it'd be really nice to have it like a lot shorter, like to like down it. I don't, I don't need all, I appreciate the generosity, but I really don't need all of this. The second piece here being the spacer itself, where you can put a SSD or a hard drive in there and you know it works out just fine. It's nice that you don't have to screw it in, I guess, and I will say that even though this is 3D printed, I don't see much wrong with it. Like, it's sturdy, it's nice enough, um, I don't foresee this breaking. I have had that experience before, but not with this, so that's been pretty nice. However, I guess this is me personally, my own personal experience on this. It's not that I've had any bad experience with this, but it's just... I would rather have a actual metal adapter in there, which I have done before. Actually, for a friend of mine, I had set him up with a Xbox where we installed a SSD in there. I pretty much told him, I am not going to install a SSD in your system unless you also provide an adapter as well too. Like a good adapter, one that I am going to be able to screw into the entire plastic piece and it's not going to be going anywhere. I don't want to sit there and be taping it down or anything, I just want it to be all solid and not go around anywhere in case the console gets dropped or shaken violently or whatever it might be. So I guess that's just my own personal preference. If this was a system I was working on for someone or even one of my own personal systems, I wouldn't want to use a spacer. I would want to use, I guess, still a spacer, but something that you could actually screw in. Uh, but since this kind of just pops into place there, I personally wouldn't use this on my own installs. Now, I have reviewed these spacers for the PlayStation 2, and for the PlayStation 2, I really don't see as much of an issue there because you really don't have all too much wiggle room in there. So the hard drive is nice, or the SSD, it's going to be nice in there. But with the Xbox, you're going to have a lot more open space in there. So that's just my own opinion. Personally, I would rather have something where I have no issue, you know, popping the SSD or the hard drive into, but even with that, I'd want to screw it in and then I'd want to take the spacer itself and screw it into the actual plastic for the Xbox itself that is holding the hard drive. But when I used it, I mean, I was able to pop the drive in with no issue. I was able to pop it into the bay with no issue. I was able to shake it around, hit it, all that stuff. It didn't come loose. So if you do use one of these spacers, I mean, my recommendation would be you might want to use something like Captain Tape to make sure the drive is nice and secured as well too, but that's about all there is to it. I don't really see much issue here, it's just personal preference, and I've already let you all know of my own personal preference. So overall, if you're looking into some modifications for your Xbox here, you're just wanting to improve it that much more, is this a good fan mod? Is this something that you should install, set up? I would actually recommend this. Yeah, I like this fan mod quite a bit. Yeah, having the really long wire here is a bit, I don't know, odd. It, can, it can be trimmed down, and that would actually be my recommendation to them to really trim it down for future installs, but it's also not like it's going to be hurting anything. It's just going to be a little bit annoying when you're getting everything put back together. But overall, I mean, the fan mod itself, so the fan assembly with the two plastic pieces here, 
These worked out great. I had no issues with these, and I would recommend if you're wanting to quiet down your Xbox, the fan is definitely the way to go. And if you're transitioning over to a two and a half inch drive, such as using a solid state in there, and you need something like a spacer, well, this isn't a bad option either. Again, it's not my own personal preference, but if you're looking for a option like this that's easy enough and just snaps in, it's really not bad. Anyways, that is about it here for my review of the Quiet Fan Mod as well as the hard drive spacer. Let me know if these are things that you might be interested in. And again, I do want to give a big shout out and thank you to The Peaceful Outcome for reaching out and providing these for free to the channel for purposes of review. Definitely appreciated it. And I do look forward to seeing what other modifications they might have for other systems as well too. Anyways, that is about it for this video. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. And let me know if you've tried a fan mod on your original Xbox. Does the fan on there annoy you? Like, I don't know. Let me know. This is actually my first fan mod I did on the system, and I thought it went great. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off real this time. Later, everyone.